Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's April 30th, 2019. I'm down and back. I'm actually south of the uh, solar panels and the sugar shack. And I'm down in an area uh, that we started Hugoculture Systems several years ago. And I'm not going to talk too much about the Hugoculture Systems in this video. I'll make a separate video about uh, some of the uh, the issues that I've had with these Hugo culture systems that we put in and I'll go back and get the exact dates and all but there's uh, there's some plants that I'm going to be dealing with today that are my sea berry uh, plants or sea buckthorn and uh, in in the permaculture circles it's a very well uh, publicized uh, type of fruit bearing plant that's an excellent nitrogen fixture uh, produces very nutritious, very high vitamin C levels uh, in the berries themselves. And I previously made a video about my thoughts on this particular cultivar of the sea buckthorn or sea berry. And I'll put that link in the upper right hand corner. So in this video I don't want to trash <laughs> sea berries or sea buckthorns. Uh, I actually think that they're, uh, they, they, they have a very valuable place on homesteads and on uh, permaculture sites and and I hope to get a different cultivar in the future one with bigger berries less thorns easier to pick and so on but this video isn't really about that it's about a couple of of mistakes that I've had and um, one of the mistakes that I made I'll, I'll ultimately be making another video about that and that's a, up around pond four that's the one where you've seen in the drone shots lots and lots of lily pads during the summertime and that's the one with all the block wall around it well I had some problems with the black block wall up there and I had sea berries planted all around the eastern side of that area so two days ago I went up and I did lots of pruning I found two females that were there and we went down and we labeled them with yellow uh, ribbon tape which is really a handy thing to do do I have one in my pocket no I don't so uh, so we labeled uh, the females with some yellow ribbon tape. Thea went through, I think, last season when the berries were out and labeled the ones behind me here as well that are just starting to leaf out. And uh, so we have two rows of sea berries here. Now, now we got non-sexed uh, bare, bare root uh, sea berry uh, plants when we got them, or sea buckthorns. And, uh, and we got them from a permaculture site. And, uh, and so we planted them up and we hoped for about a 50-50 ratio. And I think out of 50 plants that we put in, I think we ended up getting six females. Kind of, <laughs> you never know how, how, how things are going to work out when, when you make a purchase like that. Uh, so there's two up front that I've marked and I pruned uh, significantly and those I'll be transferring, transplanting along the stone wall and I've made videos, uh, I'll be making more videos about it as well, about the Hu culture and back to Eden systems and building living, living fences. So these plants can also be decent living fences but they're excellent habitat for small birds it offers them great protection with all those thorns in there and it's and it creates a nice little uh, uh, niches and nice little locations for the birds to be I don't see a lot of birds or a lot of animals eating the uh, the sea berries themselves but they're pretty good for that so I'm gonna uh, at least take all the females that we've identified and I think we've got one two and three here that are still alive and uh, and so I'm going to be pulling the rest of them out now there's a couple of big screw-ups that I did do so the two locations where the sea berries are low are planted there's two rows here and they're both uh, both of these are three foot wide Hugo culture uh, systems that I put in probably seven years ago I have to go back and look at the date but what we did do is we took an excavator with a with a 36 inch bucket dug down I believe three feet in one and two feet in the other and and I took logs and old uh, journals uh, for veterinary journals and and uh, New England Journal of Medicine all all our medical journals and, and like that that I've been saving for years and now that we're in a digital age I don't need the old paper ones 
And so those along with all the large logs, along with a smaller root balls, because these are not very deep, and we, we completely covered the ground level, and then I built it up a little bit. Then I took lots of leaves. At that time, I was going into town with the dump trailer and uh, picking up bagged leaves. Lots of people were still using bags to bag up their leaves, and I put a couple of foot of leaves on it as well. Then I put uh, at least uh, 18 inches of compost. So these things were really piled up initially, and we planted potatoes in there, we planted various vegetables, and it was fantastic. Never had to water it because it retained so much water. There's a, there's a small pond just this side of the solar panels. We put that in so we'd get some solar reflection off the surface of that small pond. And that's another issue, that's one that goes dry because it's all sand and gravel right there. But that's another video in the future. But uh, so we have, we, we, we created these wonderful hugelkultur systems and we used those for, I think, five years, four or five years. And they did start to come down over time and they got to the, to the, to the, to the, to the possibility of being level. And then I put more compost on it and wood chips on top of that. And then I took those uh, bare root sea berry plants and I planted those, oh, about every six feet and I staggered the two rows here. Those sea berries took off like crazy. They grew like crazy. But one of the problems is that when they were growing so rapidly, and I think there were still logs down in there in the base of these hugelkultur systems that were dug down uh, about three feet, two to three feet deep into the soil, and they got established around those, but with these high west winds, and I anticipated that that tree line there, the, the area that I'm actually working on, the fence on the other side of it, um, I anticipated that that would break a lot of the high western winds during the winter time. But every single one of the trees, even when they were only four feet high, got knocked over. So we increased the size of our stakes that we use because we we're only using uh, three foot tall uh, stakes initially, like quarter inch rod, steel rod, uh, and like rebar. And so we decided I came down, took some six foot uh, fence posts and some stainless steel pipe that I had, and I drove that alongside each one of them. And we use some blue bale twine that we save from some of the, when we go to pick up the horse manure and the animal manure from Purpose Farm, there's always bale twine there. So I save that bale twine. We use that to support and tie off uh, the plants. Well, over the next couple of years, these plants continued to grow, continued to get knocked over each season despite that. Because putting the stakes in, into the hoo culture system wasn't nearly as supportive as putting the stakes into the gravel system that we have here. So even the, the support rods would go over with them as well. And they got so big, in hindsight, one thing I should have done was keep pruning these back until their roots really got expanded out into the beyond the 36 inches because the roots t t uh, desired being just into the compost area. Last year I pulled up two of the trees, to uh, two of the bushes to see how they were doing and I could see just about all of the roots were not even extending into the uh, the gravel system off to the sides. They just stayed right into the hugelkultur system. Long extensive roots just going right down the hugelkultur system instead of going out into the margins and I can see why. So that's something to think about with perennial uh, plants, putting them into something where you're putting in partially a hoo culture subterranean system. The other thing was that these things grew so darn fast. I, they'd, you know, their diameter would probably increase at least an inch a season. And we didn't account for the type of loop systems with the bale twine that we're putting on it. So some of them grew so rapidly that they got so tight. Some of them I noticed, I went down and cut them and to cut the bale twine, but I obviously didn't cut them all because it constricted them enough that uh, unlike slower growing trees that you have a, a, a noose around the trunk of the tree, it didn't incorporate them in, and the cambium, the 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 the, the layer underneath the bark, which which is conducts the fluids uh, up and down, 
that layer got completely constricted and the one the parts the the trunks that were tied off died above it and uh, and some of them just snapped right off with the high winds of the, of last fall and this spring so few things that I learned from this number one if I'm digging these systems down uh, I need to keep them really well pruned uh, any perennial uh, plants keep them really well pruned if they're rapidly growing until we can make sure that they're actually sending the roots out into the lateral surfaces because the material that the there's so much humus there's so much beautiful rich soil in these hugelkultur systems and it's still decomposing over time and the level is gradually de decreasing it decreases relative to the to the basically gravel of the of the adjacent uh, soil the next thing is when we're supporting these we got to put the stakes not into the hugel culture system because the hugel culture system the hugel culture system is such that there's so much uh, decomposition over time that the soil becomes looser and looser as time goes on and those support stakes won't support it and every season or twice a season have to go and loosen up any uh, supportive loops that we put around the trunks of these systems also has to be done uh, so this is not a poo-poo for uh, sea berries or sea buckthorns I think they have a very vital role. role. They, they contribute to the soil nutrition, they build soil rapidly, they grow like, like crazy, and they pr produce a very high, highly nutritious berry. The cultivars that we got, unfortunately, I, didn't, I did not select one uh, by doing careful research to pr that produce smaller thorns and larger berries. And the second thing is, I bought unsexed bare root uh, plants, so that, that was, a, was a mistake. So those were a few mistakes there. The other thing is the hugel culture system. Very productive. Re we really got tons of food off of these hugel culture systems before I transitioned it to uh, perennial plants. Now, I should mention this as well. The other third, the next thing was using loops, uh, using bale twine, something that's unforgiving with really rapidly growing uh, bushes and plants. Got to make sure we loosen those up. Uh, I should mention this as well. Uh, so in permaculture, we're always talking about zones. So zone zone zero is basically inside of your house. That's where you're spending uh, most of your time, especially during the winter time. Zone one is those areas that you're going to every single day, multiple times a day. So like the kitchen garden, the herb garden, that would be in that location. Now, and zone five would be the forever forest, the area that you're seldom going into, you're really doing no, no significant things other than tapping the trees for, uh, sir for maple sap so you can make maple syrup. Well, this area here is like almost zone four, zone three or zone four, but we're several hundred feet from, uh, from the living structure. This is a place that, that it's, it's a pain to go ahead and put in uh, vegetable and fruit gardens. That's why I made the decision to switch this area over to perennial plants. And I knew that many people had shown with their hugel culture systems growing uh, perennial plants. And we've had great success in other types of hugel culture systems growing perennial plants. <clears throat> But back here, uh, we weren't coming back here as often, and it was a real pain to come down here and, and, and check on plants, do any weeding we needed to do, or to harvest, or to plant. It was so far away from the house that we decided to go perennial with this. So that's something to always keep in mind is your zone. How, how often and how easy is it for you to get to that area? Will you be going to the area often enough to appropriately take care of that site if you're going to be putting your, your vegetable gardens in and all that? Well, folks, I'm back. Uh, sorry about the interruption here. There was one additional thing that I forgot to mention that I screwed up with. So as I mentioned, when we dug these uh, two hugel culture systems down, uh, put them in on this side of that tarp because we got all of the sea berries, sea buckthorns out of the area. Um, 
and for the most part they were in pretty good shape except for the sea buckthorns that were strangulated by the bale twine being left around them constricting them and killing the upper part above it but the root system and the rest of the base of the plant seemed very good so I took all the males with the exception of one from up front and put them into a large culture pit the females I went ahead and cut back uh, so that they would have a chance and cut back the roots as well took them out and transplanted them over by the stone wall so we have a living fence going on over there uh, but an additional thing that that I think it, uh, merits mentioning is uh, the slope of the property goes from where I'm standing going backwards down that way. This is down south. And pond seven's there, pond six is right behind the camera. And uh, when we put this in, of course we, we smoothed out and, and not leveled, but we flattened out the, the property going back with a nice gentle slope. So. From this end of this who culture bed near where I'm standing here all the way down to the other end where all the sea, sea, bear, sea buckthorns and sea berries were pulled out of the ground. Um, there's about a two and a half foot uh, uh, decline in the elevation of the surface of the soil. And when we dug the hugel culture system, we didn't taper the, ba the base to make it level. We kept it uh, consistently about th three feet or two feet depending on which one we're talking about below the, the grade of the surface of the ground here and as a result this is spring we have all the melting snow all the rain the uh, water level is probably four or five six inches from the surface of the ground down at that end and it's fairly dry up here it's not dry but the water level isn't up here so the water found its level going down two and a half feet here going up to about four to five inches above the surface down there so that would be something to think about you'd never want to put fruit trees or nut trees this close to the to the water table you'd want to have it mounted up in this situation the way we originally had these set but you'd want to be able to maintain those mounds and make sure that all the decomposition was decomposed enough so that the roots can always keep their feet from getting wet, keeping those roots from getting saturated. So I thought that was just one more thing to mention. Again, the constriction with the, with the, uh, the bale twine that we, we had established there, not good. Having it in fairly loose, still decomposing uh, woody material, allowing the, the westerly winds to knock them over. And certainly not having them high enough if we're going to have uh, uh, perennial big bushes like these sea berry plants mm -hmm. are. We should have had those up higher so that their feet didn't get wet as well. So those are all things that, that uh, I should have taken into account. And I'm sharing with you so that hopefully you think of these things before you install your system. So if you found this video of value, please give us a thumbs up. It does help us out. Share it. Uh, you know, it, it, these sorts of things can help our channel grow and we really appreciate it. And be sure, let us know what you think about this. Uh, was this a value? And if you have any suggestions or thoughts and, and uh, systems the way that you've put them in, uh, you know, any ideas, I, I encourage those conversations on the channel. Thanks so much for watching, folks, and have a great day. Bye-bye now.